Hi everybody, it's Alexa. And the other guy. Johnny. We're here for my top ten picks of 2012. Hers. Not mine. Obviously, I guess I don't get top ten picks. Johnny doesn't get top ten picks. I get, see? Because Johnny doesn't blog enough to get top ten no, picks. No, I read enough. I read I read pretty, a lot of books this year. Anyway. But I don't get to be involved in anything. I'm like the little what orphan What do you think kid. you're being involved right now? I'm... I already know my job. I've been designated a job. Wait, hold on. Ladies Stop. and gentlemen, we have a script. Stop. We, we have do a not script. have a script. We have notes. Anyway, Kay. let's just get started. How are you doing? The first book, which is not one of my top ten, but I wanted to mention this one as an honorable mention. Because I reread the entire Twilight series this year, and I really could Thank you. I'm proud of you. I really could not stand Breaking Dawn when I read it back in 2008 when it first released. So the fact that I reread it again this year and gave it five hearts is something that I'm extremely kind of surprised about. So because I love this book so much, it's kind of just an honorable mention because, yes, I did read it this year, but it's been read before by me, you know, a couple years ago. So. Well, you think it would be by you. Who else would have been read by if you talked about it before? By the whole world. Anyway. Now we're on to my official top 10 picks, so we're going to start with number 10, which is Legend. That one. Yes, that one. It's going to be a long top 10, guys. <laughs> the thing that I liked so much about Legend was not necessarily the characters, but I really liked the storyline and the plot of what was happening in the book. It was dystopian, but at the same time, it kind of seemed like something from the past, because they kind of reverted back to having like poor sectors and the plague and people who were in charge. What was really interesting about this one though was it's set in the future and the United States is not really the United States anymore. There's the Republic of California and fighting against the Republic is the Patriots and then they also have like rebels who are also against the government system that is in California. So just gave a really interesting look at a couple characters. Um, one character is a guy who was poor, one of the poor sector guys who had to leave because he couldn't pass like his trials. Which... I am legend. And then um, on the other side you have a girl who's a genius who is part of the government and so is her brother. And so you kind of get both sides. You get the poor sector side and you get the government type of side. So that's what I thought was so interesting. So that's my number 10 pick for this year. Oh, I'm so glad to hold all these books. You keep rambling. Next is number... Legends of the Hidden Temple. Next is number 9. Tom Cruise movie. Which is a historical romance. Becca didn't read very many of these this year. But this is one I did read. It's 9 Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake. Okay, Johnny. Sticker. I really liked this one because I felt Do I that... Do keep holding this up? No. No. Keep going. I really liked this one because I kind of have trouble reading historical romance from time to time. Just because I really love Lisa Klepas, who wrote the Hathaway series, which I think is the top of historical romance. But, uh, so it's hard to find something that kind of compares to that, but I really think that this author is going to be somebody that I enjoy for historical romance. And I'm hoping to read more of her books in 2013. Does this have any hot scenes? A couple. But it's historical romance, so do you really think it's going to be that steamy? I don't know. People had to give birth and have children somehow. Anyway, it was a really good historical romance if you're looking for a good one. I'm not. Next up, my number eight pick of this year is Cinder. <sighs> okay. What I really liked about this book was it is a fairy tale retelling. It is also sci-fi. And YA kind of all rolled together. You don't really get to see many YA that are also like sci-fi fantasy books. So I really enjoyed this take that there was like this queen from the moon who had a race of lunars and they had to kind of come down back to earth and talk with the prince who was ruling kind of a country that was falling apart. It also does not take place in the United States. It takes place overseas from us. So it's really kind of cool just to see different cultures to see a futuristic look and everything involved with a Cinderella retelling. So it's my now you just ruined it. What do you mean I ruined it? Well, they were getting hints, you know, about the moon and lunar. I was like, I've heard this story before. I think Disney did it. It's Cinderella. called Cinder. So really, what did you think? Obviously, I'm not thinking too much right now. 
My number seven pick of the People year. People can't even see that. I know. It's really hard to read the title of this one. Um, this is actually the art copy of Embrace. Scan it. <laughs> I really loved Embrace. I felt that it added something new to the YA paranormal genre because this is actually the only YA paranormal book that is actually on my top ten this year. Last year, my favorite book was kind of a YA kind of contemporary with paranormal mixes in Mark Dyer. Oh, yeah, it was like... And this year, um, this is the only paranormal that has made the top of my list, and it's not at the very top since it's number seven. But what I really enjoyed about Embrace is I felt it just added a more adult kind of theme to YA, and I really loved Phoenix. Honestly, if Phoenix was not in this book, I would not have read it because Jean it would have... No, because it would have been just like every other YA paranormal out there. So if you're looking for some characters that add a little bit something different, at least in Phoenix, I would definitely recommend checking this out. My number six top pick for this year is the entire series. Number six! They can't even see your hands. Like, they think it's number three. Six! Anyway, I read Exiled, Shift, and Release this year, which are all part of the same series by M.R. Wow. Merrick. Oh, there's something in my head that hurts. What I really enjoyed about this series is it is a YA series told from the male perspective. It is high fantasy with mixes of paranormal elements, so it has a little bit of something for everybody. And it also has a little touch of romance in there as well. So I really enjoyed all the travel to different uh, worlds as well as their own. I enjoyed the perspective of the hunters, the shifters, the werewolf pack. Um, people who had just kind of different elemental powers in this book. I thought it all came, it seems like a lot when I'm saying it, but it all came together really nicely in this whole series, which has been really great so far. Sounds like a hodgepodge. Does it have uh, zombies? No, there's no zombies. Does it have alternative history? No. That means it doesn't have something for everybody. Okay, but it's got a lot of mixes of, Continue. like... Anyway, I think it was a great series, so you should definitely check it out if you haven't. Plus, it's indie, so where can you go wrong when you try an indie series? Um, I read Silas. <laughs> this book's based on a true story. <sighs> Next up is my number five pick for the year, and it is Foreplay, which is a combination of two... Sh two stories by Maya Banks and Shea Black, which I know that I'm going to have to read more of their work because I really enjoyed this. Um, Her name is Shayla. What did I say? Shea. Shea? Shayla? You know what I'm saying. I do, they don't. Anyway, this is in my Miss top of this I year because I read very few adult books this year, surprisingly enough. I read more than her. But, um, I really, really enjoyed this one. I really don't like the new direction that the kind of contemporary slash erotic adult uh -oh. romance has taken. <laughs> I don't like the direction that that romance kind of books have taken lately with the addition of, like, Fifty Shades of Grey. Mommy porn. And, yeah, things that That's just... stupid. They classify themselves in this genre that, like, this book would be considered part of. But they don't really hold up to what I would consider normal for this I don't consider that to be mommy porn. Anyway. That's what they say. We don't say that. Anyway. So this book I thought was kind of the old style romance in this genre. And I feel like the old style is much better than the new style. Because I'm really not impressed by the new style. But the old style still really impresses me. This actually has a good storyline. And I'm not just saying that to be funny. I actually enjoyed the book. You only read a part of it. You didn't read the that part thing. that I read, I enjoyed. Anyway, next up is in the same genre as that book. It is Backstage Pass. This is the first in a series. It's called the Sinners on Tour series. It's about a rock band who travels oh, all yeah. over. And uh, this is the first book where you kind of get a different spin on the romance because he's not an alpha male. He's more of just kind of, you know, just kind of more laid back, kind of chill type of guy. And she's kind of the strong-headed one here because she has kind of a big career and she works for an esteemed school and she's trying to um, make sure that her school keeps her while at the same time she kind of is having this romance with um, one of the guitar players in a rock band. So it's really interesting. I really love this story. I felt like it had a storyline to it and it also had kind of the steam factor that you're looking for in romance. And again, since it was written before 2012, it kind of has the old style feel to it, which I, as I already said with the other book, I enjoy this much more than I enjoy the new style of romance. So I think from now on I'm just going to have to kind of continually read the old style because the new style just, 
it's good, but it doesn't, it's not quite where I want it to be. You want to kick it old school? It doesn't wow me. The next book, which is my number three pick, is Promises, which is very hard to see the cover. Wait, is that? And this romance happens between two guys. Oh, this is the book that Mike was talking about. <sighs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> one is named Matt and one is named Jared, and I absolutely loved this book. Um, I haven't really read many in this genre before. I kind of just started reading um, Mail Mail this year, so I'm really excited to kind of try some more of it, but so far this is one of my favorites. I just love that the guys have such a good connection, even though they try and deny it. It's kind of like the push-pull of relationships. You know, you kind of want to give in and be with the person that you want to be with. But at the same time, you're very worried of what society's going to think of that relationship, and you kind of backpedal away from it. So Matt does some things to Jared that are just kind of cold and harsh and just heartbreaking, but I really loved the story, and I really loved how the two guys were able to kind of, you know, try and fix these things or try and overcome what society tells them that they should be doing in their life. And uh, it was just really eye-opening. I thought it was really romantic and heartbreaking at the same time, which is the way I like my romance. So, it was a great book. Do you like your romance? I can go, like, if you like your coffee. Heartbreak. I don't even know where that was going. I don't even know where that was going. I don't drink I I coffee. Need, I, need, I think I need to take a nap. My number two pick of this year is a book, is a YA book, actually, which is Personal Effects. This book is about a boy, so another YA written in the male perspective, which is something that we don't really get that often. This is contemporary, and it's also a standalone, which is something we do not see very often in the YA yeah, world. Yeah, because most everything is a series. Exactly. I really enjoyed this tale. It's about a boy who's in high school, and he recently lost his older brother to the war. And Where'd he, he go? His older brother dies in the war. Oh! And so he wants to figure out more about his older brother because his older brother is significantly older than him. So his older brother has kind of been out of his life for quite a long time before he dies in the war. And uh, so he goes looking through his older brother's stuff in order to try and find a way to connect with his older brother to kind of understand um, his older brother's life better. He ends up finding um, some love letters between his older brother and a woman. And so he tracks down this woman and he goes to find her to try and learn more about his older brother. And there's some twists and turns and some emotional depth that kind of happens when he finally does figure out who the letters are from. And he's able to kind of reconnect in a way with his brother even though his brother's been dead for a little bit. So it's just a really kind of heartbreaking story. I loved all the characters in it. I loved where the story went. It was heartbreaking at times, but it also kind of... It was heartbreaking, though. Drive the point home. Like, you know, when the guy dies, I mean, that's just kind of sad. And he's trying to reconnect with, you know, a guy who's dead. So that's just sad. But I really enjoyed it. I think that this is going to be one of the great voices in YA coming up. And you should definitely check out this book. I think it's very underrated in YA you right now. the author's going to be one of the great voices? Yeah. E.M. Koki? Yeah. I think she's really going to come up with a lot of great things in the future. This was her first book, as far as I she's know. She's an attorney. And uh, I just really expect great things coming in the future from this author. So I would definitely check this out because, as I just said, I think it's underrated in YA. I don't e. think. E.M. Koki. I don't think that many people got to read this one yet. And um, you really should. You'd be missing out if you didn't. And finally, my number one pick of 2012. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Is it a Star Wars book? No, it's not a Star Wars book. Is it book. a Captain America graphic novel? No. Is it Twilight fan fiction? No. Wait, hold on. Is it a, a color by numbers book? No, it's not color by numbers. It does have good storylines. But it's hard for me to stay within them. But I'm... Get it? Uh, anyway. What is it? Wait. Guess it. Guess. Take a guess what your favorite book is this year. Nothing? Which my favorite book might right. surprise some of you because I am a big YA or adult romance reader. But this one is not in either one of those genres. It is Unholy Magic, which is an urban fantasy series. It's part of the Downside Ghost series, and this oh, is actually the second book in the series. I read the first one this year as well. The first one really didn't impress me. It was good, but I didn't really see what the big hype behind the series was. And now with this book, I get it. This book was everything that I personally look for in a book. I like to be shocked. Pages? I like it. <laughs> yes, I look for pages to be in a book. Words. 
But I look for a shocking factor, I look for action, I look for that intense kind of romance, those emotional feelings, the point where your characters are doing something frustrating that you just want to throw the book across the room type of feeling, or you want to like go into the story and shake that character and be like, why could you possibly be doing that? And this book has all of that. Chess is, oh, she's amazing. She is not your classic leading lady. She is stubborn. She is fierce. She is on drugs in this book. She was orphaned when she was younger. She sees ghosts, and that's what she does for a living. She works for the truth of ch the Church of Truth, and she hunts down ghosts for them. And so her life has kind of always been very messed up. I mean, she's constantly on a drug high. She she's, she sounds like Rusty. She wants no emotional connection with anybody, including Terrible, who has been there for her for two books now. And some of the things that they do in regards of their relationship or lack thereof just oh my gosh it just frustrated me so much but i knew that chess has to go through this in order to kind of figure out what she really wants and what's really best for her so i am hoping that by the time i read the third book that everything kind of gets cleared up and chess kind of realizes that she was an idiot in this book and that she should really you know consider terrible to be a great guy i'm just saying so this is my number one pick of the year. So if you have not read this urban fantasy series... Or go you, do it right now. Go do it right now. Do yourself a favor. Even if you don't think you would like urban fantasy because you've never read it before, I strongly encourage you. It's almost like a mix of kind of YA and romance. You don't get as much romance as you do in the adult romance books. And you get some of the kind of emotional kind of aspects and stuff of a teen book with some action in there. But... Oh my gosh, this book was just amazing. You have to read it. Even if you haven't read the first one, go read the second one, though. Go second read the first better. one first. You have to understand who the characters are and what the plot is before you just move on to number two. Number two. <laughs> anyway, so that is my top ten for the year. And be sure to check out when Bianca does her top ten picks of 2012. I've already looked at some of them, and I'm definitely going to have to check out some of those books. So be sure to watch out for her post, and also watch out for when Bianca and I get together to do our 2013's top picks for the coming up year. And if you have a video of your top picks of this year or a post, be sure to link it below, and we will come check it out. When the hell am I going to be having something? You are not. You're getting something in February. You're getting a um, birthday kind of day, like a extravaganza giveaway thing. Nine people will show up. Anyway, that's it for us. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.